After four long years, we are finally getting another film from Paul Thomas Anderson, and even though I won't have it for another month, I still wanted to do a video looking at the cinematography of my favourite film of his. Phantom Thread is my favourite film from Paul Thomas Anderson, and whilst it could just be a coincidence, it feels more true to him as we see the film from his eye completely. Almost 10 months ago, I released a video looking at how Paul Thomas Anderson shoots a scene, and of course I had to include Phantom Thread, but to put it simply, I'm not happy with it, so I wanted to create a more updated video looking at the cinematography. In today's video, I want to look at what equipment Paul Thomas Anderson used, as well as how he achieved the unique look. As always, let's start with the equipment first. Anderson opted to use the Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2 paired with the Panavision Ultra Speed Z Series Mark II lenses. Paul had spent a lot of time with the lens guys to come up with a combination of lenses that had a lot of texture to them. They had imperfections to them, and then we did a lot with the IOCON filters, which lowered the contrast. Now, that's generally the opposite of what most people try to do. Most people try to have a nice, rich black, a very nice, velvety type of feeling in the blacks and that was no bueno for this film. So Anderson is very knowledgeable when it comes to the technical side of filmmaking. He knows a lot about glass and how he wants it to react to film. And as well as the ultra speeds, he used some of his favourite lenses, such as the 40mm that he likes to call Gordon Willis lens, as well as the 50mm antique path lens which he used on There Will Be Blood, but had it converted to spherical to use on Phantom Thread. As with any Paul Thomas Anderson film, it was shot on film, and they did a number of tests when choosing what film stock to use and ended up going with Kodak's Vision 3 200T and 500T. As they wanted to dirty up the image, they slightly underexposed the film and then pushed it when developing, making the stock become more sensitive, but I'll get into that a bit later. it would be taking too much credit to call me the director of photography. I've worked with a few guys for many, many years now. We've done a lot of side projects, and it was just a natural extension of that. The reality is that we all did the work we would usually do, we just didn't collaborate with a cinematographer. This is Paul Thomas Anderson's response on being asked about the role of the DP on the film, and I felt as though it was important to note before we went into looking at how he achieved the look for the film. So looking at the look of the film, we have quite a dirty feel. We've seen many period dramas over the past years, but this seems to be the only one that has strayed away from the ultra clean, almost minimalistic look. Looking at the film stock again, as Kodak are trying to compete with digital at the moment, they are creating this ultra-fine film stock and that simply doesn't work for the film, so they started pushing the image more and more before finally finding a style that they liked. The process of pushing an image is the slight underexposing of a shot and then pushing it in the development process, making the stock become more sensitive as well as increasing the texture, which is why it isn't anywhere near as clean as other films shot on film that same year. Anderson also likes to stay away from modern film technology, and he and his lighting cameraman, Michael Borman, spent a lot of time testing different lights and how they would react to film stock. They did a number of music videos, as well as numerous other tests over the 8 month periods that they were in pre-production. They also used a lot of haze in the film, which creates texture on top of the grain, as well as dirtying up the image, which is what Anderson wanted to achieve. There were some scenes where the haze was quite heavy though, for example, in the fashion show. This cannot look like The Crown, was one of the first things that Anderson said regarding the cinematography, saying how it looked beautiful but super clean and it was clear that his film couldn't look like that. Let's touch on the crew aspect though. Michael Borman, who had previously worked with Elswit and Anderson as their gaffer, was credited as the lighting cameraman for the project. Now, this was the first time that Anderson was shooting a film without any dedicated cinematographer, and whilst studios wouldn't usually let a director photograph their own film, he isn't your usual director. And looking at the inspirations for the cinematography, it isn't a surprise that one of the major inspirations was Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, more specifically, the candlelit scenes. 
However, there is just so much to get into here. So if you wanted to go much more in depth looking at the lighting, then I'm going to link Lighting Phantom Thread, which hosts Michael Borman, the lighting cameraman for the project, in the description down below. Ultimately, Phantom Thread has one of the most unique looks for period drama, and ultimately, it's down to Anderson being much more involved than he usually is. He was able to photograph exactly what he had in his head, and it makes him one of the most unique filmmakers today. I hope you enjoyed this video looking at how Paul Thomas Anderson shot Phantom Thread. If you have a film or TV show that you would like to see me analyse, then leave a comment down below. If you found it informative, a like is appreciated, and if you would like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.